a fellow recently sent me this uh, radio in for repair. He yeah, took it to someone else and uh, they played with it and never could get it to work, but the radio had no transmit, no receive. This is what I call one of the classic radios. I have two of these myself. It is the Yaesu model FT726R. And what this is, the VHF, UHF, all mode radio that was made back in the 1980s. They were great radios. Uh, they were used a lot for um, working the uh, Oscar satellites. Um, this radio does have the satellite board in it. Um, you can get it to transmit one frequency where you can uplink on two meters, downlink on um, 70 centimeters, uh, or vice versa. This rig also has uh, the 50 megahertz um, board in it, so it's a tri band radio. Um, all modules in it are removable, and uh, I think they made the 2 meter, 70 centimeter, 6 meter, and a 10 meter module that could be fitted into these rigs. Um, the problem was was that like I said there was no transmit, no receive in this radio. And I try to tell people that anytime you work on an old piece of a gear like this, you need to go ahead and recap the boards. Um, a radio this old, it just needs to be completely recapped. Now I've already fixed everything else all but the power supply. I had to order some caps for it, so I will be uh, have them in probably Tuesday or Wednesday and I'll go and get this back together and get it back to the customer. But I wanted to show you what kind of damage that these old capacitors can do to a board. So as you can see, um, this is the main TX-RX board. And as you can see here around this capacitor, We'll have scraped the board. That's where this cap, the electrolyte, is leaking out and is onto the board. And I'm finding this in many places on this board. You can see just how much of the uh, coating is just coming off. You can see all that black on it, what that electrolyte is, has leaked all the way down here on this uh, silk screen leather. It's just turning it all black. As you can see in this shot, someone has went in there and has tried to solder the traces back together. And definitely from this capacitor and this capacitor both has leaked onto the board. But the funny thing is, they've never changed the capacitors. They just tried to fix the damage without fixing the capacitors. So here I have no idea what they were trying to accomplish. There's a capacitor that's been two wires sorted where the original capacitor was and then this capacitor is laid across a tuning can and they have added a jumper wire. that goes off down to the bottom of that resistor. Definitely not the correct way to do something. There's just a uh, another shot of another capacitor. And you can look down right here. I thought it was sort of flux to start with, but all of this is where electrolyte is leaking out onto the board. And you can see where it's speckling the, uh, the ground plane here. But if you look right here, you see this green. This is oxidation where it's eating this uh, resistor leg right into. So it won't be long before this lead completely fails and comes off the board. So as you can see I got my work cut out to fix this one. It's got a uh, lot of components will have to be removed from this board 
and um, replace all the caps on it after repairing all the circuit damage and uh, put new formal coating back on top of it so nothing gets short out. So that's going to be a lot of work. Um, more than what I have time to put into it right now. Um, I will eventually get to it. But the customer needs his radio. He likes to do a lot of VHF playing around and uh, single sideband. So I had to make an exception to this radio. So I went eBay browsing and uh, happened to find a brand new receiver board from the uh, eBay in the UK and what happens is when those guys would buy these radios like this a lot of them would go ahead and purchase extra boards for the radio knowing that in their country it might be a little hard to get parts for it to work on it so they would order extra boards this guy happened to have the transmitter board and uh, the receiver board and a front panel board where well, all I needed at the time was the uh, receiver board so I went ahead and got, made the bid on it and got it for sixty dollars US and a plus I got this nice little crystal filter here um, I think it's for CW so that was the plus to the board uh, the first thing I done when I got the board in like I say it was brand new but think about it even this board was uh, made in the 80s so I completely rehead and recapped the whole board didn't have to worry about fixing any damage it's already, you know, never been powered up, so it wasn't no problem. So I went ahead and recapped the whole board with new caps, and I got it installed, and now the radio is ready to go. So it's just a, uh, always a good rule of thumb when you're working on this older equipment from the, you know, 70s and 80s. Um, I don't care if it's a ham radio, a CB radio, or what it is, the first thing you need to tell the customer you're going to recap it, um, especially of this vintage, and you got known problems already. Um, if you notice, this is the bottom of the radio. This board is upside down with the components being on the bottom, but still Electrolyte was able to wick up on the circuit board and eat the other circuit board up. So always make sure that uh, when you're working on this old stuff, you go ahead and replace those caps. Um, used to when someone would bring an old vintage CB in the first thing I tell them I'm going to recap it um, if you don't want me to recap it you can carry it somewhere else but uh, that takes care of 90% of the problems the radio can have even with these old ham radios got to recap this stuff and I'll show you a little lesson I did on purpose when I go to work on the uh, old national in CX-3 you know y'all remember what we went through on the TS-50 that I worked on uh, quite a while ago um, you know that radio was made in the 90's and you saw how all the caps were bad in it so uh, you know gotta replace some caps guys if not you're gonna find more damage than what you really want to work on so anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the little tip. Just uh, want to let you know that capacitors are a big problem. Now I've got to get this off the bench and uh, I've got another one of these Y100s. I already know what the fault is. I just got to confirm it and uh, see if we can get that thing back and going for this customer. Anyway, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And we'll catch you next time.